Hi there. Here's a short video looking at some of the causes of price volatility in markets. So we often see uh, the price of commodities, things like sugar and uh, copper and rubber and coffee and oil, display quite a lot of price volatility from year to year, sometimes from week to week, month to month. In this example, we see the price of sugar, the world's price of sugar in terms of pounds per tonne, rising quite sharply from 2010 through to 2012 but, and 2013, but the last couple of years, the price of sugar has nearly halved. Now, the explanation for that, uh, by and large, is there's been a much, much more favourable supply side condition in the market, significant increase in market supply, uh, partly perhaps triggered by the high prices in 2012 and 2013. Increased supply of sugar from countries like Brazil, India, China, and Thailand. So you've had an increase in supply, but equally, demand growth in the market has been falling, in part, of course, due to increased health concerns. And in the UK, uh, going forward, uh, there'll be a sugar tax on some sugary drinks. And who knows, the tax might be extended to other high sugar products. So a combination of fast growing supply and slowing demand growth has caused some price volatility in sugar. Now, let's think a little bit about the analysis diagrams, which could help you to explain price volatility. I'll take a couple of examples for you in this video. In the first one, we could look at the impact of an adverse supply shock. So the example there could be extreme weather events, which bring about uh, significant falls in production. It could be drought in some markets, it could be flooding in others. It could be extreme temperatures, which affect the supply, for example, of a, of a farming primary commodity. The adverse supply shock causes a shift in supply from S1 to S2, and that drives the price higher for a given level of demand. The key revision point is that the supply shock will cause greater price volatility if the elasticity of demand for the product, PED, is less than one. And I've drawn my demand curve as fairly inelastic. Of course, it depends on the size of the supply shock as well, but prices will be more volatile if the elasticity of demand is low. Here's a second example. In this example, we've shifted the demand curve out. So for example, this could be due to speculative demand, people going into the market to buy up available stocks of commodities in the expectation that prices will go up. So rising market demand could also cause a spike in the price, in this case from P1 to P2. And again, if the elasticity of supply is low, an outward shift of demand will cause a significant increase in price. If you think about the last two slides, the price volatility is in large part a function of low elasticity of demand and low elasticity of supply. And if, you draw, if you draw your diagrams that way, that will really help your analysis. So for example, we've seen in recent times a severe fall in the price of crude oil. This chart takes us from June 2014 through to June 2015. And you can see in just one year, the price of crude, this is Brent crude oil, in US dollars per barrel, fell from over $110 in June 2014, as low as sort of $45, $50 before recovering a little bit. In some world oil markets, of course, the price fell even more. Well, how do we show all this kind of stuff using supply and demand diagrams? Well, we're trying to show a fall in the price of oil, and one factor could be a big increase in supply. So I've shifted the supply curve out from S1 to S2, as you can see. So when the major oil producers may have ramped up their production. And of course, you can also get a fall in price if the actual demand in the market is less than forecast demand. So it could be the case, for example, like a country like China grows more, grows more slowly. It could be a recession in Europe or some other factor causing the demand for oil, the actual demand, to be less than the forecast. So in my diagram, a combination of an outward shift of supply and a lower than forecast demand uh, causes a significant fall in price from P1 through to P2. So that's been a quick short look at some causes of price volatility in markets.